Our first presenter is Andrew Gerbrick, who will be presenting about MLB Teams Hobbies. Hey guys, thank you for coming out today. As you said, my name is Andrew Gerber, and I'm going to be talking about MLB Team Salaries. I did this research this semester in Dr. Clark's Sport Analytics class. So the reason I thought this topic would be interesting was in North America sports, North American sports like the NFL, the NHL, the NBA, the MLS, they all have salary caps. Um, this prevents teams from spending more than their competitors. It creates more of an equal playing field in terms of salaries and um, being able to spend the same. So the MLB, since they don't have a salary cap, they have what's called a luxury tax. This luxury tax is $189 million through 2016. And yes, teams do go over. The Tigers, the Dodgers, the Angels are, have all gone over one time in their lifetime. The Red Sox have gone over four times, and the Yankees have gone over 11 times. When teams go over the luxury tax, they must pay taxes on the salary that exceeds this limit. So having a luxury tax does not really stop teams from spending as much as they want. In 2014, the Dodgers spent $235 million, where the Astros only spent $44 million. So this creates a pretty unequal playing field in terms of player salaries, and that's what I was interested in looking at to see teams who spend more, do they win more. And if you're a Pirates fan, don't worry, they are $111 million away from going over the luxury tax cap. So in my research, I divided teams up into groups of 10. Each year, there's a top 10, a middle 10, and bottom 10. Um, so teams can move from year to year. To year. Example, the Blue Jays were in the bottom 10 in 2012, and now they are in the top 10 in 2014, the most recent MLB season. So I'm not looking specifically at teams. I'm looking specifically each season where teams fall in the top 10, the middle 10, or the bottom 10. The exception to this was years 1995 to 1997. There were only 28 major league teams. So for those years, I had to divide the teams up into 10, 9, and 9, the groups. Um, because in 1998, the MLB added the Tampa Bay Devil and the Arizona Diamondbacks. In 1998, there were nine cities who submitted bids to get a Major League Baseball team into their city, and the MLB awarded Phoenix and Tampa Bay. Um, things haven't really worked out for Tampa Bay, but with their attendance, but that's a different story for another day. And I stopped the, um, going back in 1994 because there was no World Series, so my data will look at 1995 through 2014. The question being answered, like I mentioned, is each year are the MLB teams that are in the top 10 for highest team payrolls having the most success? I'm defining success by playoff appearances, World Series appearances, and World Series championships, the most important one. If we just look at last year, how the teams um, finished, the top 10 had five teams make the playoffs of the 10 teams that could make the playoffs. Bottom 10 had two. The A's and the Pirates represented the bottom group here. Both of them lost, however, in their first opening round game, so they did not fare very well. But just looking at one year is not enough data. Like I said, we're going to look at 20 years. So if we look at the past 20 years and how teams have done, the top 10 have had 95 playoff appearances versus the bottom 10 having just 24. And I thought this was very significant in telling that teams that are spending more are clearly making um, way more playoff appearances. So here's a bar chart. Um, and you can see the substantial differences from each group over the past 20 years and how they've fared in making the playoffs. In terms of money, of, um, of how the teams spend, the average salary of a top 10 team over the past 20 years has been $104 million, whereas the bottom 10 has been $43 million. So there's a pretty large difference. Um, how many of you think that the large teams and the smaller teams, you think if the gap is widening. And you, you think, for those who think it's widening, you are right. Um, if we go through the years here, and we make it to the most recent five years, it's a 146 million to 60 million. And this is all summed up right here. You can see it is growing each year, has gone up. The past 20 years, average salary is now up 40% over the past five years. It went from 61 million to 86 million, so the large teams are actually widening their gap and there's actually a bigger difference. Second 
um, term we're going to find for looking at success is making the World Series, not winning it. The top 10 teams have made the World Series 25 times in the past 20 years, whereas the bottom 10 teams have made it just three times, or less than three, five times, four times. So that's pretty significant. Um, just let that sink in, that 25 teams from the top 10 have made the World Series, or less than five for the bottom 10. But the most important thing is actually winning that World Series. So for, the, for that, I broke it down for every five years so you can see how the time has progressed. In the last five years, the top 10 teams have had four World Series championships, the Giants three times, the Red Sox, and the Cardinals were in the middle 10, but the bottom 10 had no teams. If we go back 10 years, there's still no teams from the bottom 10 that reached the World Series championship and got a ring. 15 years, there's finally one team from the bottom 10. Does anyone know who that might, might have been? Marlins. Yes, in 2003, um, they put together a pretty impressive run. They had a lot of young guys like Miguel Cabrera, um, Juan Pierre, Ivan Rodriguez, Dontrell Willis. You might um, recognize some of those names. They had them at a really good price, which um, is a reason how they could win the World Series. And then finally, if you go back 20 years, um, 14 of the past 20 years, a team from the top 10 payroll has won a World Series compared to just one from the bottom. And that sums up the World Series championships. 70% have come from the top 10. So if you still don't think there's a significant difference, here's some more numbers. 95% of all World Series champs have been from either the top group or the middle group. 90% of teams that have made the World Series have been from the top or middle group. And 86% of teams who made the playoffs have come from the top or middle group. This shows that being a team down in the bottom 10 does not fare very well when looking at how they spend money. Um, teams need to, be, if they want to be competitive, they need to get themselves up to the top um, one or two groups, as you can see by this data. Um, this data does not support teams not spending a lot of money. And unfortunately, the Pirates have been in the bottom 10 groups, 18 of the past 20 years. The only years they were not was in 2001 and 2003. Um, they had pretty large contracts too. Brian Giles and Jason Kendall, which led to them getting up into the second group. So answering the question, teams that spend more money um, definitely win more. And another thing I found through the research was the gap is only widening. So what does this mean for the Pirates? Well, I think the Pirates need to spend $30 million more million. This would get themselves into the second group, um, where obviously you can be more competitive over the years. The numbers clearly support teams who are in the top two groups have had um, success in winning the World Series. And spending $30 million more million will get you three to four more good players. So, and you also need an owner who's willing to go out and spend the money. And right now, the owner just doesn't want to spend the money. So is there any questions I can take on MLB salaries relating to winning?